Hello everybody and welcome, this is Roland Hartman from Graphic in Motion and in this tutorial I will show you how you can customize my watercolor and ink logo reveal template. Before we get started, I just want to point out that the customization process for this template is a little bit different. So if you just purchased the template and opened up the project file, moved to the render comp and didn't see anything except these blurred numbers appear, don't worry, nothing is missing, nothing is broken, this is completely normal, we just have to set up our reveal first. And the process is really easy, very intuitive and versatile and I will guide you through it step by step now. One important hint before we start the customization, please make a backup copy of the template and just save it under the name of backup or whatever, just in case if something goes wrong during the customization that you can come back and open this backup copy. You can download the template anytime from VideoHive, but if you save a backup copy now, you maybe will save some time later on. So to get started, we move to the logo composition. And if you do not find the logo comp already open in the timeline, you can find it up here in the project area. In the logo composition, you can replace my logo with yours. So first of all, we need to import another logo. And therefore we move to file, select import, which is now unfortunately outside of the recording area. And then you select file. And now in my case, I just use an example logo from Graphic River and I open it up and drag the logo on top of my placeholder. And now I just hide my placeholder and I just want to scale up my logo a bit because it's a little bit too small. Now we can move to our second composition, which is called the Reveal Setup Composition. If you take a look at that comp, uh, maybe you think, oh my god, what is this? This is some kind of a weird puzzle. But don't worry, it's not. These are just a few helpers to create our reveal. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is if your timeline marker is on frame number zero, you see that we only have this number one uh, square visible. And if you move your cursor through the timeline, you see that all these pop up until number 16. This is the last placeholder that we have. So I recommend that for now you take your timeline marker or cursor and just move it around four seconds. And now we start with the customization process. The first step of creating our reveal will be that we place these little squares with the numbers. And these are just uh, placeholders for our watercolor and paint and ink elements later on. And we just place them so that we know uh, in which order our logo will reveal. First of all, I take my placeholder number one and I just drag it to my, the left side of my logo because I want the reveal to happen from left to right. And I would recommend this for you too because the camera movement of the template is kind of starting on the left side here and then it's traveling a bit to the right. So if you have a logo similar to this one, then I would recommend that you start your reveal on the left side. Of course, if you have a really circular logo, you can also start the reveal in the middle and then work outside from there. But in my case, I just want to start right here. So this will be my first element here. Now I take my second marker here and put it, let's say, around here because I want the, the second element should be, should be revealed here. The third element will be around here. The fourth element will be around here, this area of the logo. And then we will reveal this area in the middle. Afterwards, I want to reveal this blue area here. Then I will reveal this area right here. And the eighth area will be my green area right here. And in the end, I want to reveal the last part here and this yellow stripe across the logo. So this looks a little bit strange now, I know, but in the next step you will see why I included these helpers in this template. Now it's time to take a look at this elements preview layer. And actually I see that I made a mistake. Uh, I will correct this later on. 
And you see that on this layer, which is a guide layer, actually it will not render and will not have any influence on the outcome of this customization. This is just an overview chart uh, where you can find all the elements that you find in this template. So let's open up the watercolor and ink elements folder. And you see that we have 12 ink strokes here, 12 ink stroke compositions, and you can see the representations here. Then we have five paint splatters, and we have finally 15 watercolor elements. Now we want to replace all these placeholders with elements from our library. So first of all, I will select my placeholder number one, and then I will take a look at my watercolor elements, and I want take something, let's say I start with the element number 15. So I take watercolor element number 15 and press the left mouse button, drag it into my timeline above my selected layer, hold down the alt key and release my mouse. And now I replaced my placeholder with this element. I just will undo this for a moment and show you another way. You can also drag it directly into the comp, hold down alt, release your mouse key and it will uh, have the exact same result. What I want to do now is I want to just scale and rotate this a bit. So I will press S on my keyboard and scale it down a bit. And now I just want to rotate it so that we have something like that. And I will just move it over a bit so that it covers my edge here. I could also make it a little bit smaller, but I do not worry too much and you should not worry too much too. This is a creative process. You cannot do anything wrong here. So the next placeholder will be up here. So let's see whether we find a nice uh, shape here. And I think probably this one is pretty cool. So I will take shape number 13. Uh, for, don't forget to select the placeholder you want to replace first. So select placeholder number two, take watercolor element number 13, drag it over, hold down Alt and release the mouse key. Again, we will scale it and rotate it a bit. Oh, sorry. I'm that was the wrong one. So like so, and scale it down even a bit more. And I will just move it over so that it covers up this edge here a bit. You do not have to precise following the shapes of your logo, so don't worry too much about it. You just can be a creative here. Okay, so the next placeholder is placeholder number three. Let's see what we have got here. Maybe this time I'll just take my watercolor element number four. So select placeholder number three drag in watercolor element number four, drag it over the placeholder, hold down Alt and release the mouse. And now I will just scale it down and rotate it. Or maybe I'll leave it like that this time so that these elements are covered like this. Looks pretty good. Now let's take placeholder number four. And again, let's just search for a nice shape. Let's say this is pretty good for Number four again, so I will just take number four, watercolor number four, drag it in, hold down Alt and release my mouse. Again, I scale it down like so, and I rotate it. This time like that, and I just drag it over. And maybe this time I will scale it, I will unlink the two scale values here because I want to flip it upside down actually. So I will just type in a minus 37 degrees on my y-axis and now I can rotate it in place here and now it fits my logo pretty well. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now let's move on to placeholder number five, which is a little bit uh, beneath our paint here, but I still can see it. And for this one, I will take, let's say, number three. So watercolor number three, drag it in, hold on alt, scale, I will just speed up a little bit now. Now we will take placeholder number six. Again, search a nice element here. Um, this time I will take uh, number 14, drag in number 14, hold down Alt, scale it down and rotate it until everything is covered more or less. Except, again, you don't have to be precise here. So like that, placeholder number seven, uh, we will take number two this time, drag it in, scale it down, and line it up approximately, like that. And placeholder number eight is up here. 
for this one I will take number 10 watercolor number 10 and I will rotate it we'll just move up a bit that we can see what we are doing like that and we'll scale it down a bit just to cover this part of my logo more or less like so and maybe even scale it up a bit it looks pretty good now we move to number nine and number nine will be again let's say number six so we will take watercolor number six drag it in hold down hold release your mouse scale it down and rotate it a bit so that our logo is more or less covered and the last one will be number 10 and for number 10 i want to use I want to use one of these paint strokes here because, uh, yeah, this shape, the shape of the logo is similar to my paint stroke number one here. So I just will take this one, ink stroke, they're called, sorry, not paint stroke, ink stroke number one, hold down alt and replace it. I will just rotate it so that it follows the shape more or less and I will scale it down. I will scale it down even further so that it's more or less covered. Okay, so now let's just move our preview elements a little bit off the way. I could also make it invisible for now because I will not need it for now. And now you see what we have got and we have got just our logo covered with black paint. Well, that's not what we want. But before we continue, I will just uh, hide my placeholders because I will not need them anymore. So I will just hide placeholder number 11 to 16 and just click the eye switch here to hide them. The next step will be to colorize our paint here. So therefore you just select this logo layer up here and enable it to so make it visible. And now you see we have a second representation of the logo on top of our black paint. And this just helps to colorize the elements a little bit better. Now you solo the logo layer and the first watercolor element. And now we can start uh, colorizing them. If you select the watercolor layer now and move to the effect controls panels, you will see that there is a tint effect already on this element. Um, if not, then you probably missed something with the replacement. Then you can just go to your effect and presets, type in tint and drag a tint effect on your watercolor layer. Now you want to change the map black to value. So we take the eye dropper here and just take over the color from our font here and I move to my next element. First of all, of course, I have to solo it so that I see it. And this one is behind this blue element here too. So I will do the same here. And I also can make this a little bit, or I can create some variations here because this will make it look more interesting afterwards. Now I will take the next element and again, I will select the layer and change this to similar color maybe again i will make it a little bit more bright here to make a little bit of a variation now element number four and this will be green because it's uh, kind of lining up with the green area here and also we can just change it a bit make it a bit darker like so next element make it solo it with this switch and this is also uh, something like this blue but I could also just make the green a bit, mix it a bit with the green. So let's say I want to take a dark green here. You know, as I said, this is a creative process, so you cannot do anything right or wrong here. Um, important is that you approximately match the colors of the areas of your logo, but you do not have to be precise in any way here. Okay, so now we take the next element, and this will be, in my case, let's say blue. So I'll just take the color from the logo in this case I will leave it like it is the next element will be down here and I will take the green here maybe I should have not colored this one green so I will just change this and make this blue again and now I will make this green and a little bit darker or brighter let's see yeah why not a little bit brighter and now we take the color placeholder number 10 or watercolor element number 10 I should say and this will be also green so in this case I will take over this color and it looks pretty good and I will also make it a little bit darker just to get some variation in here 
And now I have one more here. This is the watercolor number six and I'll make this green too. And in this case, I will make it darker again. And now it's time to take a look at, ah, I forgot the ink stroke, sorry. No, we have to color the rest ink stroke, of course. And the ink stroke will be yellow. And what I want to do with the ink stroke, if we just turn off our logo for a moment, you see my ink stroke is now behind all these layers of paint. I do want it to reveal at last. So it's very nice that we have it uh, at last of my reveal here, but I want it to be above all my other layers. So I just take this layer and drag it on top of all the others. So on top of the first watercolor element. And now you see in the end, it will create this yellow stroke and this will have a really nice effect in our uh, reveal. Actually, we can move to the render comp and take a look what is happening here. And you see in the beginning, our color is building up, it's being painted on the paper. And through the animation, the logo builds up and then it reveals. And I can see from this quick preview already that we've done a pretty good job and that this reveal will look really nice. Okay, so this is more or less it with the reveal setup. What you can do now is, of course, you can add some more elements to make it a little bit more interesting. And I just want to show you this to give you a bit of an idea what you can do with this template. So therefore, we just have to enable our elements preview composition here again. So let's make it visible and actually let's just de-solo or deselect this the solo switch here so that everything is visible again. And now let's take a look which kind of paint splatters we want to add. Let's say we want to add some of these. So paint splatters number five. And I want to add it around here or maybe also around here so that we have a little bit more going on here. So therefore I just select, let's say my watercolor number 15, which is right here in the beginning. And I will just duplicate it by hold down control and press D or command D on the Mac. And now I will select the lower one and I will go to my project setting and go to my paint splatters, paint splatter number five, drag it in, hold down Alt and release. And you see now it's already in here and I will scale it up a bit and I will rotate it a bit. And actually I want to make them even a little bit darker so that we have a little bit more contrast, but I also want to drag them beneath the next layer or even beneath this one. Yeah, so that it's it's not so obvious. And then I will just move them a bit. And also I can now line up the timing of the reveal. So I will just put it approximately between these here. Ex again, you do not have to be precise and you cannot do anything wrong, so don't be afraid. Okay, so now let's say we also want to enter some kind of uh, yellow splatters in the background of our area here. So we can take a look which one we have to duplicate here. So I will just take watercolor number 14 seems to be a good one. So I press Ctrl D to duplicate it, take the lower one here. And again, I will take my paint splatters number five and drag them in. And now I have to scale them up a bit so that they are more obvious. And let's say I will drag them in here and maybe I will rotate them a bit so that we have these small splatters um, like so. This looks pretty good. And I want to change the color to yellow. Very nice. Uh, maybe I will also make it a little bit darker in this case so because it's a little bit in the background like so. And you see that now this gets a more more organic and interesting feeling to it. So let's add some other paint splatters around here in this area. So this will be more or less in the end here. And I will just take the last watercolor here and duplicate it. And again, take paint splatters number, or let's say I will take another one for now. I will take paint splatters number two for now. So drag it in, hold down Alt, release the mouse, and now they are not revealed yet, so I just have to move my cursor a little bit behind here. And I will scale up my paint splatters here so that they are visible. Now I can rotate them a bit. And 
and move them around a bit like so. And in this case, I want to move them above a few of these elements so that they are more obvious. And I also want to change the color and I also will change it to, let's say, a brighter green or even something like more of yellow here. So that we get a little bit more of variation. And I will also just change the transparency so that they are not so obvious. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this result. Now we can take a look at our render composition. And you see we have our paint splatters and everything looks really organic and really cool, like an artist painting your logo. And then in the end, it is revealing into its original shape. And if you take a close look, um, if you have some regions like that one, this is because you probably did not cover up your logo fully with your, I will just make this invisible for a moment, with your elements. So like in this area, for example, you can see that we have a little bit of an empty area here, and this will uh, be then uh, transparent. But I think we could cover it up more, but actually I really like this look because it makes it more natural. So the next step in the render composition is that we can enter our title here. You could, of course, also just turn it off, but you can also move your cursor behind this marker, double click on the layer and enter whatever you want. And of course, you can change the font, the size and everything. So I will leave it for now because the tutorial is already quite long. And I will move to the next step, which is editing our paper textures. Let's move to the paper texture composition and you see that there are already three paper textures included. We have a sketchbook texture, we have a white paper texture and we have a vintage notebook texture. Let's select the vintage notebook texture for now because this is a very obvious texture. And let's move to our render comp. And as you can see, this changes the look a lot. And now we can also apply our texture look. So if we take a close look at our paint, well, it blends in, but it doesn't blend in perfect. So let's move to the paint texture look setup composition. And here you have this layer which says change paper texture intensity on this layer. So we select this layer and I'll just make a little bit more room here. And now you see that we have a levels effect on this layer. And because I changed the texture now, these arrows here, the small arrows, are completely outside of our visible region here. If I change it back to the standard texture, you will see that this will match. But if I change it to another texture, I have to reapply or reset this, uh, this effect. So just drag over the left arrow to here and the other one to about here. And you see immediately we have an effect. And now you can, of course, also change the intensity with this slider. The more you black value you clip, the more solid the color gets. And if you, if you open it up, then you see we have a lot of white and our paint is nearly invisible, but that's not what we want. So we'll find some kind of in the middle, like here. And now we move to our render comp and you see now it really blends nicely with our texture. Last but not least, what you can do is you can change the overall look of this template and therefore you just have to select the look setup and in the look setup I applied a photo filter. You can just turn it off or you can also just change this here, maybe to sepia in this case. And you have a curves adjustment, which is only adding a little bit of contrast and you can also change the colors here. I added a bit of blue in the shadows. So if you do not want this, you can just uh, reset this, uh, play around with your settings and create your own look. And in the end, I applied a noise. And this is just to give this a little bit more of an organic feeling. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is that you can change the background color, of course. So if you take a look at the three first camera angles, so this one, this one, and also this one, you see that we have a background here. And you can, of course, change the color of that too. And you see here is the background layer, which says change background color here. And here you have got a simple ramp. And now I can just change the color and create the look that I like, maybe something darker or something like a sky or even a bit brighter. Or I just want to match the feeling of my foreground here. 
and can create different different uh, atmospheres here. But for now, I will just leave it like that. And the last step is to add some audio. So you can open up the audio composition, import your audio again through file, file import, and then you just have to drag in your audio into this composition, and then you're good to go and render out the final animation. So I really hope that you like this template. I hope that the customization process is not too difficult, but it really is the only way to create such an animation. There is no way that you can uh, create a drag and drop template for such a watercolor animation. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to drop me a mail through my VideoHive profile or through my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. Thanks a lot for watching, have fun, and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.